we shall be looking at limiting factor analysis or optimal product mix. That is in some textbooks, you know, you can see the topic as the optimal product mix. Now, the overview of this topic is just a situation whereby you know you have some goals to achieve, but you have limited resources to achieve that goal. You know, so now the question now is how do you go about them? So that is where limiting factor analysis came into play. For example, you have four courses to write and you have limited money with you. So how do you go about it? And you want to achieve the maximum benefits possible. So that is where limiting factor analysis comes into play. So in that case, you now rank the options you have. You, know, you rank it in the order of priority. So that's the overview of this topic. So basically, what is limiting factor? So limiting factor basically is also known as bottleneck or constraint. That is something that is limiting the ability of an entity from achieving its full potential. And what is that something? So that something is, is known as resources. It could be money, it could be material, it could be labor, it could be manpower, you know, and all sorts. It could be machine. According to CIMA, Chatter Institute of Management Accounter, so it says that limiting factor is anything which limits the activity of an entity. That is, it's anything that limits, that restricts the ability of an entity from achieving its full potential. Now, we've established that, yes, there is limiting factor. That is, an entity would ensure that it enjoys the maximum benefit from these limited resources. Also, we have seven golden steps for determining the optimal product mix or the most profitable mix of an entity. And the seven golden steps is as does. Number one, determine the actual bottleneck or limiting factor. If there are more than one potential limiting factors or bottleneck. And this is what we mean. In a situation whereby an entity, you know, it's looking like an entity has two or more potential limiting factor, e.g., these are the maximum resources that the entity has. You know, they cannot give you materials, so, 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 kg, you know, maybe one million kg, you know, labor hours, you know, Maybe 500,000 hours. Then, machine hours. That can be like 800,000 hours. So, you, you might not be okay. You get that. So, but the main thing is that you need to determine which one is the actual limiting factor. Because in most cases, in most cases, not all these three potential limiting factors are limiting factor. You get that. It's not all of them. And limiting the ability of the entity from achieving its objective. And since you now need to determine which one is the actual by first of all calculating what do you require you know, to, to produce certain unit of the company's product. And the company's product can be A, B, and C. Yeah, so, don't, so don't produce certain unit of A, B, and C. That's your production unit. Like how much of the materials would you need? That's the requirement. That's the require, materials required. Or you no, know, or hours required, as the case may be. You get so after calculating the required to produce the production unit, then you now need to to compare it with the available resources. That is the one given to you in this scenario. That is, oh, these are the materials available, or these are the these are the maximum quantity of materials that the entity you know, can can access. So when you now compare the required and the available, then you now know oh, this is the limiting factor. And you would know if one of the potential limiting factor is the is the actual limiting factor if you are having a deficit. That is if the available resources is lower than what you actually need. Yes, that, that in that case there will be deficit and that particular resource is the limiting factor or constraint or bottleneck so don't worry you would be you know you got to know much more about that when you start solving examples 
but you would see the the practicality of what I'm explaining. So secondly is the contribution per unit of the product. So contribution, as you all know, is the difference between the selling price and the variable cost. So you now need to determine the contribution per unit of each of the products. So after doing that, you also need to determine the limiting factor or constraint per unit. At least that limiting factor we've identified in step one as the actual limiting factor. You now determine, okay, how much of this material, how much of these resources will it take to produce one unit of each of the products? Will it take to produce one unit? Of, and in that case, that is the limiting factor or constraint per unit. So the limiting factor or constraint per unit is the step three. Then the next step is contribution per limiting factor. And how do we get the contribution per limiting factor? So that is your step two divided by step three. That is what you get in step two, the contribution per unit. You now divide it by the limiting factor or constraint per unit. With that, you get the contribution per limiting factor. Then the next step is to rank the products. So that is, you rank the product based on the step four, based on your contribution per limiting factor. So you now rank it from the highest to the lowest. So whichever has the highest, you know, would take the larger portion of the available resources. Then step six, you allocate the available resources using the ranking then the last one you determine the optimal product mix so and the typical example of course this this topic we use it in our day-to-day -day activities let's look at this simple illustration example one what you do is you apply the seven golden steps to arrive at this optimal product mix and what is the step one the step one is determine the actual limiting factor or bottleneck so let's check step one determine the actual limiting factor so now let's check which is the actual limiting factor and more do we even have more than one potential limiting factor let's check so it said during july 20x1 the available direct labor is limited to 8,000 ads. Sales demand in July is expected to be 5,000. That is the maximum unit that the entity is supposed to produce for Shannon is worth 5,000. So we now so that the available that labor, that's the, you know, that is it's limited. So they have given an int here. That is, this is your limiting factor. This is the actual bottleneck. And we are told that fixed cost is worth $20,000. We already have our limiting factor. So, so we come here and say actual limiting factor equals to direct labor as. Then step two. Step two is what? We should determine or we should compute the contribution per unit of each of the product. So here we have the product. We have Agbao and we have Shano. What is the formula for? the contribution per unit. So that is selling price minus variable cost. So now, what is the selling price? So the selling price for Agbao is 14, then Shano is 11. Then the variable cost is as does. So the first item of variable cost is direct materials. So the direct material is one, three, direct labor, the right label is six three and variable overhead. Variable wide is one one. Then we now have the cont have the contribution per unit. So in this case, contribution per unit would be fourteen minus one minus six minus one. That is six. The channel is what? Four. As contribution per unit. So then the next step, step three, is what? The limiting factor 
per unit. And the limiting factor here was direct labor hours. Let's determine that. So we have the products within them here. The direct labor hours, how can we calculate that? We have the direct labor cost already. And we have the rate per hour. Rate per hour is what? $3 per hour. So now, how do we now calculate the direct labor hours per unit? So, first of all, we would derive a formula for that. So, direct labor hours per unit would be equal to the direct labor cost divided by the rate per hour. So, we have it here. Direct labor hours per unit for Agbao. What is the direct labor cost for Agbao? That is 6. And divided by so what is now the rate per hour? If I may ask. So the rate per hour is three dollars. So it's two hours. The answer here is two hours. Then for channel, channel's direct labor cost is three dollars. Then divided by rate per hour is also three dollars. So this is one hour. So now we we'll go to the step four. What is step four? Step four is the contribution per limiting factor. In this case, uh, we we'll bring in our product. Then we have the contribution per limiting factor. And first of all, about the contribution per unit of about is six dollars divided by the direct labor hours per unit of about is two hours. So six dollars divided by two hours is what? Well. That should be three. Then for channel, for channel, the contribution per unit is what four. Then divided by the direct labor hours per unit is one hour. So this should be four. So then step five would be what would be the ranking. How do we rank? We we'll rank the product based on the contribution per limiting factor. So we we'll bring this in the product. We we'll bring it here. Then contribution per limiting factor will bring them here too. So we now rank the product based on the contribution per limiting factor. So now, which one should come first? Is it three or four? Production is having contribu contribution per unit of four. So it is coming first. Then we have product Agbao, which is coming second. So now we've done the ranking. Then step six is what? Allocate the available resources. So let's just do available direct labor hours of 8,000. So we would now allocate that. Then we would start with the hours. Then the available. Available here is 8,000 hours. Then but our channel comes first. So we have channel. Remember, we told that sales demand in July for channel is what? 5,000 units. You know, that is, but our channel coming first. We have to meet all this demand because it's coming first. So we should take a larger portion of the available direct labor hours of 8,000. So we we'll start with the labor hours per unit of channel, which is what? So this is the Direct labor hours per unit of channel one hour. So we come here, we say one hour times the sales demand of 5,000 units, and that will be equal to 5,000. So you now deduct it from the available to arrive at the balance. So in this case, we'll be having balance of 3,000. Then the next product is Agbao. So and not, they didn't give us the sales demand anyway. So that that makes us to be on the safer side. So let's assume we have like four thousand units as the sales demand for Agbao. So if you should now multiply two hours times the four thousand units, you know that would be eight thousand hours, and it should exceed this three thousand hours. You know, so in that case, we won't be able to produce the whole of the four thousand units. You know, that's hypothetical. It is not in question. I just Imagine that that as we were given together. So, but now we're not given the sales demand for Agbao. So it makes us to be on the silver side. So we now check 
how many units of product Agbao can this 3000 hours balance produce? You know, and also product Agbao will require two hours per unit. So in this case now, we we'll come and we'll say 3000 hours divided by the hours per unit of product Agbao, which is two hours. So in this case, we will be having 1500 units. So now come here, we'll say the two hours times 1500 units. You know, that still gives us the 3000 hours. So we'll put 3000 hours here. Then what will now be the balance at the end of the day? The balance will be nil, not zero. So step seven will now identify the optimal product mix. Optimal product mix now be as dogs. So we have the product, then we have the quantity. So for the product, we have two products, product Agbao and product Shano. So Agbao here, Shano here. For Agbao, the Units we can produce is what 1500 units, so we'll bring it out 1500 units. Then for Shano, Shano is what 5000 units, so we put it there 5000 units. And with that, we are done with the example. Now let's look at a scenario now. We'll be assuming that the sales demand. For Agbao is 4,000 units in July. So now, how do we solve that? So, if it is 4,000 units, the effect will take place from step six. So, there will be no changes in what we solved, but I will explain to you how it goes. We will now continue from step six. We will continue from step six. Bring it. We'll bring it here. The available hours is still the same. Yeah, the available hours up to the balance here is still the same because Shano is having the first ranking. Do you get so we just copy this and I'll put it here. So now let's now face Agbao. Agbao requires what two hours. And here is it now. We needed 4,000 units of Agbao in July. If you now do two hours, times the 4,000 units, you know you'll be having 8,000, isn't it? Can you use more than what you have? Like, for example, you have 3,000 and you need to spend 8,000. So how do you remove 8,000 from 3,000? It's impossible, isn't it? Very good. So that is why you won't be able to produce the whole of these 4,000 units. So now delete this, then we'll now cancel this 4,000. That is, we can't be able to produce the whole of 4,000 units. So we now check how many units can this 3,000 3, hours produce. And this still leads to this competition we've done earlier. So that is, this is it, the 3,000 hours that we have available divided by the hours per unit of Agbao, which is what, two hours. And 3,000 divided by two hours, that is 1,500 units. So in that case, we now say two hours multiplied by 1,500 units. So that would give us hours. So thereby, the balance is, is what? Well. Balance is still zero. Then, step seven, you write out the optimal product mix. And it's still the same with what we've done earlier. 